Okay, welcome back to our gun dog training series. Um, today we're going to be covering directional exercises, which is the first bit of the remote commands we start doing with the dogs. We do it slightly different between the breeds. So for retriever breeds, um, we're doing it more from a control perspective, um, heel work, uh, obvious hand signs, and trying to make it as clear as we can to the dog, communication-wise with our body language and our voice, to um, tell the dog what we want the dog to do um, in regards to left, right, and back. When it comes to hunting dogs, we incorporate the directional exercises into the hunting because for a hunting dog with a hunting brain, it makes more sense to the dog that that's what it would be told to do after it's been hunting. Um, and it also increases the relationship between the handler and the dog. So to start off, we're going to go through what we do with the uh, retrievers. Uh, we're going to do this with young Otis, um, which is Barbara's Labrador. Um, so he's done his basic training, uh, which is coming on really nicely. He's still a young lad, so he's very energetic and we're just trying to get into him now, the remote, remote commands, so we can actually send him back, left and right. So the first thing we do is what we call a triangle. The reason why we do a triangle as opposed to um, chucking a dummy eight is because you want to better control the um, dog in the exercise and control the distance without giving a dog a reason to run in. And that's why I find a triangle is really good because you can make it as easy as you want by making it close or as hard as you want by increasing the distance between a dog and a dummy and then putting obstacles in the way like a jump, a, a river, a stream, whatever you want to do with the dog basically. On the land you're going to be working the dog. So it's a very, very good exercise um, to increase that relationship and bond between the handler and the dog. Wait. Okay, so you can see there, young Otis doing the triangle. Um, he's coming on really nicely, actually, and well done to Barbara, obviously putting the hard work in. The reason why these exercises are important, especially when we go on to the back in a minute, is because what the dog learns is our uh, voice command, our verbal command, and our body shape command. So if we give a directional command, you want to be upright and as present as we can be, and deliberately look at the dog, and then look where you want to send the dog and point, such, such like this. So it's very, very deliberate to tell the dog where to go. I personally keep that direction out and keep looking at the target area, watching the dog at my peripheral vision, so I know that the dog's gonna stay on track. If I do a withdrawal technique, which is what most people do straight away, I then left the dog to decide when to stop doing that transition from directional command into hunt, okay? Some people say they can use a hunt whistle, um, which you can if you've got a dog that runs a straight line, but I find in a shooting field when you've got all the um, distractions of different scent, birds that have been there before, etc., etc., that given that deliberate command and keeping that command out will keep the dog on task that you want. What we're going to move on to now is the back, which is a very important command, especially if you've got a dog that um, always marks short a target, you're going to have to push the dog back to get into the target area on the right side of the wind. Again, it's a very deliberate command. You step forward, you push your hand forward. It's a very obvious command to the dog because it's the only command in everything that we do with gun dogs where your hand physically disappears. So we're gonna go into that now with young Otis. Good boy. Cool, so what you can see there is Otis just completing the, uh, the back, um, which is basically a memory tree where we walk back, drop the dog off facing us, which is the, the remote position the dog would face if we'd stopped at eight in the field. Um, and then we give that deliberate go back that I talked about at the start um, to get Otis to understand that's what we require of him is to turn around and go back until we tell him 
with a hunt whistle, he's in the target area or he finds the object that we're looking for, i.e. dummy or a bird. What you're gonna see now is when we transition into the Spaniels, like I said at the start, basically uh, a hunting breed's gonna understand it more if it comes from hunting. Um, because obviously they wanna hunt, that, that, that's their primary job. Retrieving is their secondary job. So even if I'm taking a dog picking up, I will do this from the hunting because more than likely the dog would be sweeping and then I have to take control to put the dog into the right area. You've always got to remember in a shooting field there's gonna be a lot of distraction scent. If there's one bird that I know that's there touching a the corner of a field, I've got to push my dog back through that scent in that field to get to the target area. A bird on the ground will smell distinctly fresh compared to the old scent, but with a young dog, um, like, like Otis for example, you want to give that extra bit of help to build that confidence up in the relationship. Moving on to the Spaniel now, um, you'll see that she will be hunting, but healing to start with, because we've always got to get to an area to start hunting. So we heal, we hunt, we stop with a stop whistle, because that's obviously very important for a hunting dog. And then we'll go into the directional exercise, the triangle. Once she's completed the directional exercise, we then go back to hunting. So we always want to go back to hunting. And then we go back to stop, recall, and then we heal out as if we've been told to finish the drive or pull out. Um, the heel work for a hunting dog is very important because this is the control mechanism that we use to switch the dog on and switch the dog off. If we're using treats like Barbara is, and you can see that it causes problems with, with both her dogs in regards to delivery, we can fix this later on by simply removing the treats from the exercise and into heel work. So the dog starts to think that it's gonna get the, retrie uh, the retrieve, then the treat once the dog's back to heel. Delivery is a very simple thing to fix, but a lot of people put too much pressure on a young dog for that delivery to look good. What I'd rather do is have the dog doing the job first and then tidy, I polish those points later on down the road. Again, that's just a confidence thing between the, the hand of the, and the dog that can be very easily fixed. So I don't tend to construct those too much at this stage. Okay, come on. Close. Hey, hey. Close. 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 Ah, ah. Close. Good girl. Good girl. Cool. So you can see there uh, Barbara uh, doing the hunting with her young cocker. You can see it's getting most of the exercise correct and their relationship is really starting to come. Um, heel work needs to be tidied up, but again, that'll come with confidence when Barbara gets confidence with Echo and Echo will follow Barbara's lead. When we're training a dog, we tend to keep looking at the dog and panicking where the dog is. What you'll find is as you get more confident in the hand there and the dog gets more confident in you because you're getting more confident, you won't look at your dog so much and the dog learns to follow you because you could change direction at any time. So those sort of things get fixed naturally. In regards to delivery and shaking of a dummy, um, all Echo's doing is she's overexcited, she's shaking it because that's the excitement level for her. Um, she's done a bit of tennis ball as well. Um, so that, that's what breeds in that desire to, to shake, which is obviously killing the prey. Um, so it comes with a bit of prey drive. What you'll find is as the exercises get harder, the shaking will stop because she wants to get back to Barbara. 
um, and I'd encourage that to you know to increase the distance. Another way we can start to look at the fixing that basically is putting a long line on her so we can stop Echo from shaking in the first place by simply towing her back into us a bit quicker. So there's various different te techniques we can use, but again, every dog's different. So there's no one technique that's gonna fix everyone's problem out there, but you've got to look at the dog you've got in front of you and work out, hey, can I go from where I am at the moment to where I need to be? There's always gonna be an answer, but it might not be obvious. So going on from there, we go into the next part of the exercise, which is again, doing the go back command, which is very important. Um, again, we're going to incorporate that into hunting with heel work because like we said at the start, very important for hunting dogs to follow that process because if you're going to go beating or rough shooting, you've got to better switch that dog off when you're towed to, um, you know, by the keepers. So early season is definitely important because you're going to get a lot of pullout commands and you want the dog just to come back to you and heel straight out the area. If you can't get your dog back, it becomes a major issue. So you really need to, to, to follow the exercise in its entirety to build that pattern up, that picture for the dog. So we're going to go into it again now with Barbara. We're going to start off with a heel, hunt, stop. We're then going to walk around the back of Echo, put the dummy out, walk back around to the front of Echo. So we've got that remote posture as if we just stop the dog. So we go back to this posture and then we simply give the go back. Then we go for the retrieve, back into hunting. So, that, so a spaniel thinks it's going to get something else straight away. That'll encourage the dog to come straight back to you and speed up the, the, the delivery from the dog. Again, praise the dog. Don't worry too much if it's not tidy at the moment. If you focus on that delivery again too soon, the dog's going to start backing off you. So you want the process to keep going. Um, if you wanted to go straight into another retrieve, you can do. Um, but I would do no more than three with a dog in one set area because you want to get that heel out of that area as if you've got toe to put out the drive, basically. So you can chop it and change it as you want. Um, if you do both exercises together, make sure you, in your little book, your little training diary, you keep them on your phone or whatever, that you don't repeat the same way each day. You want to randomise it a little bit and keep it interesting for the dog. Different types of cover, um, you know, high cover, low cover, going through hedges, all this sort of stuff you can incorporate into the exercises. And if you can, um, you know, get on a bit of shoot grain like we are today, so it's added distraction here, so they can get used to that back grain scent before you go into the, into the season, basically. Close. Good girl. Hey, hey. Hey. Go. Close. Ah. Leave it. Close. Ah, ah. Close. Close. Good girl. Close. 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 Heel. Close. Close. Good girl. Get on. Okay, so you can see Barbara there completing the go back exercise with um, young Echo. 
Um, you can see it's all starting to come together. It's a bit untidy in places, but that, that would increase, like I said before, with Barbara's confidence increasing, which is the main thing with any handler. You've got to believe in yourself that you can control that dog to do it. Picture in your mind and a dog will soon follow. What we tend to do when we start training, or you watch this video, try and remember it, go out into the field, you'll, you'll make a few mistakes along the way, so you lose a bit of confidence and the dog picks up on it. Once you get that confidence and the exercise becomes second, na second nature to you, you'll find that the dog, again, will start following you more because you're exuding that confidence as a handler. So what we're going to go into now is the same exercises with a more established dog. Um, we're going to start off with um, a bud. Um, it will show you the exercises, hopefully a bit more cleanly, um, so you can picture in your head what you're going to do with your dog. Again, what, what you're after with, with, with both these exercises is just giving a dog confidence in your body shape. So don't rush them. Practice in front of the mirror and see what you look like to your dog. You'd be surprised how quick you increase the speed of directional commands because you're panicking the dog's going to move. They want to be, like I said, nice and deliberate and they've got to have a bit of a, an impact to the dog, a bit of punch. So when you do these commands, just slow it all down and make it nice and deliberate so the dog's got every chance of understanding what you're trying to communicate. Okay, so what we do now, we go and get Bud, go, go and get Rebecca and we'll do the demonstration on the two exercises for the Labrador. Close. Wait, no, uh, uh, uh. sit, wait. Get it. In, dead, good boy, good lad. Wait. Close. Good boy. Okay, sit. Wait. Wait. In. In, 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 in. Hey, hey, hey. Good boy, good lad. What a good boy. Okay, so you can see that uh, Rebecca's done the exercises with Bud. So hopefully that's painted a bit more of a clearer picture for you. Um, what we're going to do now, we're going to grab sp the Spaniel out, um, Merlin. He's not quite two yet, so he's still in training himself, um, but, he, but he's definitely a bit sharper, a bit more advanced. So we're going to get young Merlin out with Kate and see how we get on. Wait. Wait. Good boy. Okay. Yeah, wait. Close. 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 Oi. Close. Wait. Hunt. <laughs> Sit. Good boy. Wait. 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 Out. Wait, money in. Hey, Dad. Hey. Go on, get on. Get on. Sit. Good boy. Wait. In. Close. Close. Meh. 
Merlin. Close. 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 Oi. Close, Mer. Close. Oi. Close. Good boy. Close. 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 Get on, get on. Got it, yeah. Wait. 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 Wait, wait, wait. Go back. In. Sit. Sit. Good boy. Okay, so you can see there, young Merlin, full of joy, enjoying the job there. Um, and that's what we want to see out of our dogs, basically, the, the spaniels and the retrievers. is a tail wagging, the dog enjoying itself. There's no point in having a lifeless robot out in the shooting field. It wants to be a companion, both as a pet and as a working dog, which is very achievable. Just got to take your time and can communicate to the dog exactly what you want along every part of the journey. Thanks for watching the, the episode. Hope you all get something out of it. Um, what we're going to move on to next time is basically incorporating the directional retrieves into a bit more of a formal way of doing it and we should have lots of fun and hopefully the sun will be out.